imp the key implication of your book, or one of them, is that if the U.S. has too much power, it acts stupidly. So in, in your other made, you know, the big book, Tragedy of Great Power Politics, you kind of counsel maximizing power, right? This is the good thing to do for security purposes. But the upshot of this book is if you have too much power, you lose all restraint and discipline. So shouldn't, to kind of go to your point, shouldn't we be hoping for some measure of American decline? Aren't we only smart when we have a competitor? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of points in here. Uh, first of all, you know, there's this very famous saying by Lord Acton that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You do have the sense, watching the United States, that there is this phenomenon of uh, too much power, right? The, 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 a state can have too much power and it becomes careless and it does foolish things. Uh, this is an interesting concept that I, I have not thought long and hard about. And I don't understand what the theory is that underpins it. I think there's just a lot of empirical evidence for it. I watch the Israelis, for example. The Israelis, I think, do not behave terribly smartly because they know the United States has their back almost no matter what they do. And I think Israel, from its own perspective, would be better off if it didn't have the United States to back it at every turn because the Israelis can make a mistake and the Americans will pull their chestnuts out of the fire. And if you take the United States of America today, the United States of America is the most secure great power in the history of the world. And, and, and you realize from 1990 up until 2014 for sure, right? We, we were the most secure great power in the history of the world. We're separated from the rest of the world by two giant moats. We have thousands of nuclear weapons and it's the unipolar moment, which means we have no great power competitors. Really quite remarkable. So we are free I'm picking up on John's point. We are free to run around the world and do all sorts of stupid things, and it has no consequences. It really doesn't have any great consequences for the United States because we're just so powerful. But it all gets at the point when you're really powerful and you're free to do foolish things. And states seem to do that. Then the question is why? And there I don't have a good answer. So one of you should write a paper, answer this question, and send it to me and to John. Well, if you weren't popular uh, before, I guess advocating for decline, right, will, yeah. will certainly help but that. I, I'm, I, but, but, but I want to <laughs> I, 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 I wanna be clear here, just getting to my last slide. I'm, I'm not advocating for yeah, decline. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Right, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm deeply worried about the rise of China, right? I, I'd prefer that China not rise and we'll be stuck with liberal hegemony again, right? And fighting that battle. Uh, but, but I do believe states, my final point on this, I do believe states should maximize their power, their relative power. You wanna be as powerful as possible. But as John knows, and many of you probably know, my argument is you cannot be a global hegemon. John's argument is you can dominate your region of the world. And then the name of the game is to prevent other countries from dominating their region of the world. But the idea that you can be a global hegemon is not possible. And liberal hegemony is a way of saying you could be a global hegemon. And it's because the United States thought it was a benign, it was a benign hegemon. But you only think you're a benign hegemon if you believe that liberalism is much more powerful than nationalism. And again, John's argument is never want to underestimate. You never want to underestimate the power of nationalism and understand that that, that power right, is what makes it very hard for any hegemon to be seen as benign by other countries. 